Praise the Orb Chapter 209. War of the Gods 7. Is it up to here? Tio laughed bitterly while aiming General, Anna, are you okay? No. Anna was staggering after consuming his strength. The undead he summoned were destroyed by the persistent resistance of the expedition forces and the power of the gods. The remaining enemies headed towards Tio and Anna, the necromancer who summoned the dead and the gnome who slaughtered the soldiers with a magnificent weapon. They were approaching. General made a dull clang as it turned round and round. However, Tio didn't have the strength to control it anymore. Crocter. Anna saw Crocter fighting with the war god far away. Every time the swords collided, fire flashed. He is fighting well. Dot. It might be because the god was in a human body or because he was overwhelmed by Crocter's power. Crocter was slowly pushing the enemy back. Ordinary human eyes wouldn't be able to see their movements. Ka ha 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 hat. Tio fired general. Now it was in an ambiguous shape that wasn't a rifle or pistol. It felt like Tio's current condition. However, he raised his gun once again. Come on dot. Tio won't run or hide. The expedition members withdrew at the shout of the small gnome. There were some lower gods, but Tio's momentum overwhelmed them all. Anna dot. Are you ready? Ray ready for what? Of course dot. Ready to die. I don't. How wonderful dot. Fight until the end. The expedition members rushed. Tio rolled to the side, evading the attacks and firing general. The obviously weakened magic bullets struck them, and while they couldn't kill them, they were capable enough to make the enemies fall to the ground. Tio pulled something out, a dagger, and aimed it at the necks of the fallen enemies. Blood splattered every which way. You are lucky to see the knife fighting of Quant's gnomes division. Tio wiped the blood off his face and grinned. The expedition members rushed angrily. Then those who were just killed by Tio jumped up and started attacking. Anna exerted his power, however, the power of the gods disturbed the necromancer's energy. The corpses fell back to their rest. Ku Yuak. Tio. Attack. Anna shouted. Tio's general struck them before the enemies could rearrange themselves. There are many enemies. The other orcs. Now Tio and Anna were the only ones in the area. The other orcs had died. Both sides suffered irreparable damage from the fierce fighting, but the expedition had more numbers and survived until the end. This. More members encircled Tio Light filled the eyes of a believer as a god entered. The god wanted to finish off Tio and Anna. Gnome and half-dark elf, you made a foolish choice. Standing on the side of the orcs. One god said. In particular, the necromancer is a dirty bloodline. Anna's face turned sour. You aren't associated with the Grey God but, I see you well. You guys are worthy of death. What the hell are you saying, you bast? The moment that Anna was going to furiously curse, a spear of light flew from the God's hand. It headed for Anna's heart. Anna stared blankly at it. A light flashed. There was a moaning sound. Ho. Tio. Tio pushed Anna away and was hit by the spear instead. It wasn't a mortal wound but blood was flowing from his abdomen. Tio fell to the ground and coughed up blood. Koo hoo hoo hut, cough, cough. Koo hut, ka ha hat. Cough. Tio jeered while coughing up blood at the same time. Only this much dot. Tio stood up on trembling legs. Anna tried to stop him, but Tio pushed his hand away. As Tio stood up, an expression of admiration appeared on the god's face. Who are you? I've never seen a gnome like you. Me dot. Tio raised his chin. He was bloody but his expression was still confident. I am the son of the great adventurer Heda, the former captain of Quant's gnomes garrison and a friend of Crocter and Anna, Tio dot. Tio. The god nodded at his dignified declaration. I'll remember it. Then he created a light spear again. It flew in a clean line towards Tio's heart. It was an unwavering trajectory. Tio. Anna screamed. Tio closed his eyes. All things born were meant to die in the end. The important thing wasn't when he died. It was where and how he died. He had no regrets in that regard. He didn't want to die in a place that wasn't worthy. Therefore, 
he was able to laugh at the last moment. Adios. The light spear headed straight for Tio's heart. It flew straight at him. It would split his body apart in one blow. Quagic. The spear was crushed. An arrow had pierced through it and entered the abdomen of a soldier surrounding Tio. The soldier coughed up blood. But that wasn't the end. The arrow started to rotate fiercely in his abdomen. It became a storm that sucked in the soldiers around it. The bodies of the soldiers were shredded and flew through the air. Kuarara. What? This. Everyone looked at the flying flesh with shock. It was an incredible sight. There, a goblin was holding a bow. Goblin. However, the goblin didn't care about them. His eyes were only focused on Tio, who was ready to die. Hey Kyak. Tio's eyes widened. Yu Yu. Hida's son Kyak. Captain of Quant's gnome garrison Kyak. Proctor's follower. Why did you omit one Kyak? The goblin pointed to his chest and laughed. Tio, the goblin Kiao's disciple Kyak. The goblin who pursued the path of the strong. The shooter who wiped out the enemy by causing a spatio-temporal storm. Kiao. How did you come here dot? Don't complain Kyak. You were yelling at me to save you Kyak. I never said that dot. How funny that you're trying to deny it Kyak. Burr bullshit dot. Adios Kyak. Adios Kyak. I will play alone Kyak. This bastard. The face of the god with the light spear distorted as he watched Tio and Kiao fight. Where did this monster come from? The answer came from elsewhere. Say it again. The god flinched. A huge shadow covered his body. Monster, cancel what you said. The god turned his head. A giant cyclops was looking down at him. We aren't. Monsters. Cancel it. The cyclops shouted and swung his fist. The god barely escaped but had to roll across the ground in an ugly manner. I am Hawkeye. He is Kiao. We aren't monsters. It was the giant Hawkeye who fought with Croctor. The expedition panicked at the sudden appearance of the monsters. It wasn't just Kiao and Hawkeye. There was a variety of species, a centaur, a lich, an unknown robed person, and a terrifying ogre. How are you? Came with the orcs. We. Go together. The cyclops pointed to another direction. There. The northern orcs were charging forward. The enemies were easily broken when the orcs attacked the expedition. The divine message spread in the north as well. Gushantama's friends heard about it and came down with the great clan orcs to help Croctor. The balance was reversing again. You guys. The faces of the gods watching distorted. Taste the true wrath of the gods. Their bodies shone white. Then their power started to wriggle. The expedition members were screaming from the pressure but they didn't care. Tio, Anna, and the creatures retreated with an alert expression. They could feel that the gods were really angry. A storm of power headed to them. Kumarak laughed at the appearance of the orcs he had never seen before. I don't know what is going on, but I will crush you. He looked up at the dwarf holding the hammer. We won't lose. The dwarf, the father of all underground creatures, Tartated looked down at him with cold eyes. It doesn't matter. It is obvious that you will die right now. Cool cool cool. Kill Gruung. Warriors aren't afraid of death. I will get revenge for Almatad today. The dwarf raised his hammer. Then he brought it down with no hesitation. It was an intense blow that would split anyone's head apart. It contained enough power to every cause an earthquake. But just before the hammer hit Kumarak, the dwarf felt something targeting his neck and heart at the same time, and reflexively twisted his body. What? Sharp blades passed by him. Blood dripped down. Tartated backed away, but the double swords continued to chase him. The source was a dark elf with black skin and grey hair. There will be many interesting people on the continent. Those words are true. He waved his double swords and stared at Tartated. Killing intent was omitted from his body. Gods, are there any better opponents? Who are you? He smiled faintly. Then he briefly replied, Dryden. Soon after, he disappeared. Tartated felt something aim at him from behind and leaned forward. Then a blade stabbed his side. 
It was a whirlwind linked attack that was hard to stop. The genius Dryden, who competed with Proctor, had come down to the continent with the great plan. Tartated shouted. Now Tartated's opponent was Dryden the two of them wielded their weapons towards each other. They are the North. The goddess of mercy frowned. She was overpowering Anya in a place not far away. She was covered with multiple stab wounds from Anya's axe. The goddess treated herself with her own power, but she was stained with blood. I have to help. The battlefield is becoming strange. The northern orcs were destroying the expedition. The goddess of mercy's expression soured. Her mind was troubled. Anya laughed, where do you want to go? It is an honor to die by the goddess of mercy. The goddess of mercy's lips firmed. Then she started to put strong pressure on Anya's neck. Anya's complexion changed. Her face turned white as she ran out of air. Kuo-o-ok. In the midst of it, Anya scoffed. She wouldn't yield to the enemy under any circumstances. There was a warrior who admired that. There are female orcs with spirit on the continent. The goddess of mercy looked around. An old orc with a giant hammer stood there. Warlich we collapsed on the ground and sighed. He used all the magic he had, but it wasn't enough to overcome the power of the gods. Foolish guy, the old man declared. His body was half eaten by darkness due to Warlichwi's magic. Did you really think you would win? Kuhul, hull. That laugh makes me feel bad to the end. His face twitched. Laugh a lot. If you want to laugh underground, you can never laugh at all. Warlichwi laughed again, but the god's hands grasped his neck. Warlich we could no longer make any noise. Die. Light emerged from the god's body. Vitality began to disappear from Warlich we's body. His eyes became faint. Warlich we wanted to give one last laugh. He had to laugh. He was the abyss seeker, the shaman who wanted to touch the bottom of the endless darkness. He looked deep into the abyss and the abyss looked back at him. He always laughed so that he wouldn't be swallowed by the unknown darkness, and so he wouldn't choke on the fear. Koo hull, hull. But there was no sound. Too bad. In the distant, invisible darkness, the abyss was licking at him. The moment his mind was about to become faint. Suddenly, a loud laugh rang in his ears and woke him up. Curl 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 curl. 